so my name is Jodhbir Singh. Um, I'm, my student background is kind of different uh, from a normal student. Uh, I was actually in India for a while, um, did my middle school there, elementary school there, um, and then I came here when I was 14 uh, in 2011. Um, then I did my high school uh, from North Hampton High, um, and ever since then it's been good. And then after that I went to UMass Amherst, so right now I'm a rising sophomore at UMass Amherst. So my first language is actually two of them. Uh, first thing, uh, if you live in India, which when I was there, um, you have to have to have uh, Hindi as your language, which is the national language. The second language, which I lived in state of Punjab, and then since um, you need to know the state language, so my second language, or you could say, uh, that was my Punjabi. So when I, was, when I was in middle school, or when I was just growing up, uh, I was actually taught at home Punjabi, but when I went to school, uh, I did all my communications and everything in Hindi. Um, every single textbook, everything was in Hindi. So there's, there's the two languages I knew beforehand. Um, for my third language, um, which actually I did study a little bit in India, uh, but that was basic. That was in, that was in like uh, an advanced in English. That was like saying I went to high school and I took like one class of Spanish. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't like, a big deal like I knew all the alphabets and stuff like that I knew what the meant so all the basic knowledge but never, I never had to like know the full grammar of it um, I never knew how to put together words how to make a full sentence if I had to write a paper in English I would have never even able to do that because that was just out there English was just like a requirement I had to get through in India um, to graduate from middle school so that's my third language experience from there um, I had come in America in 2004, but I was a kid at that point. Um, I didn't go to school here. I was only here for uh, actually a three month period just to visit my dad. Um, and then I, I, didn't, I, I, was, I didn't have a culture shock because I was a kid and I, would just, I just went to a place which was Northampton and lived there for three months. I, it was more like a summer vacation for me, just going to another country and then living there. Um, I did know, not know how to speak English. Um, I did not have any friends in America because I was only here for three months. Um, and then after that summer vacation, I went back to India. So I, I, I didn't even thought coming back to America. But when in 2011, when I finally made a decision that um, India isn't cutting it for me because the education system is not that um, fulfilling in India. So I decided to come here. Um, and since my dad was there, it was easier for me, me to come here. And then I started doing that. Um, started here as a high school kid. So yes, there was a culture shock. When I was 14 years old, the first day I landed in America, it was it was huge difference because uh, I landed in New York. Um, that was the JFK. Um, and in New York, there's actually is a big population of um, Indian population over there. So it was it wasn't that big of a difference. I stayed in New York for a week. I got racially profiled. I don't know how many times in that week, but I knew that was going to happen before ha before I even landed in America. Um, after that, when I came to Northampton, um, it was actually fine. The, the town I live in right now is very um, accepting um, new, to new things, so it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't a big of a change. But yeah, I do still get racially profiled. It was a big challenge. Um, but again, I, as my dad, he's been here for a while. He's like, there's no point in like, arguing with anyone. Just do your thing, and you'll be fine. So yeah, there, there was a big difference, and I guess it's working out. <laughs> The first time I actually entered to um, high school, um, I was not taking any hard classes. Um, the only classes I was taking, the first semester, the, actually the first classes I was taking, yellow, which was required for me because I did not know any English. Uh, second was math, uh, that was basic math, and I don't think you need English, a lot of English for math, and the teachers were actually really accommodating. Um, rather than giving me like word problems, they would just give me math problems. Like they would just or rather explain it to me, and then I would just do it out. So that was my second class. Third class was actually writing, <laughs> which uh, honestly, I did not do anything. Um, my teacher was really nice with me. They actually had contact with the EL teacher. Uh, so she knew what my capabilities were, what I can or cannot do. So in short, I basically slept through that whole class. <laughs> and then the fourth class I was taking is a gym, because um, to to um, pass to our high school, I had to actually have one semester of gym. So I actually took one semester of gym, and that was my first, um, the first semester. Um, didn't know anyone. 
Um, it was hard uh, because I was just alone. The only friends I had was like my ELL kids, um, but then we weren't able to communicate either because they knew Spain, uh, Spanish, uh, French, or other languages, and I was Hindi or Punjabi, um, which was a difference, but then at the end we knew some words so we would just communicate a little bit. Uh, so yeah, that is that. Well, first thing first, let's uh, get the thing out. I wear a turban, um, so that's a big deal. So people just generally, when, uh, whenever they want to approach me, it's hard for them to approach me um, because they think of something else of me. And I, sh I really shouldn't go into that, but um, it's hard for another person to approach you. And on top of that, if you don't speak the, na um, the, the language, that becomes a more different because um, you might be saying something else and I might be interpreting it something else. Um, actually, I can give you an example right now. Um, my dad has been here for 19 years again. Um, so he has yet to, um, he has yet to like get the grasp of English. So he, he knows a little bit. The only thing he knows is that how to sell something and how to buy something. That's his job. And he does that pretty well. But when he go, gets outside and talks to people, uh, sometimes he thinks when they get ex aggressive and they're something like an aggressive uh, way, he thinks they're something at him or something which will offend him, but they actually are not. They're, they're, they're just, just trying to get their message across. Um, so that was the thing because then my dad would just get angry and the other guy who's just take, having a mutual conversation, he would think that, oh, he's an uh, asshole. <laughs> so let's not have a talk with him. So that thing becomes a difference. And yeah, that happened to me for a while, at least for a year, because I need to know a little bit, little bit um, how to communicate. Um, the day I landed, I didn't even know what, what sub meant, because that was like a lingo thing or like a slang thing. So I didn't, know, didn't even knew what that meant. So like there were some kids who actually came up to me and they were like, okay, so how's it going? I was like, I don't know, what are you saying, dude? I, I have no clue here. So yeah, first year, it's gonna be hard. Just sit down. Just listen to them, pay attention to what they're saying. That's how you're going to learn. Um, first thing first, if you're a ELL student, um, you better be friends with your teachers because they are God for you right there. Because um, the ELL teacher, is just, it's just one class. You're going to go in there, sit down, um, learn what they're saying, listen to what, what they're doing or not doing. Um, they can explain you grammar. They can explain you um, everything. So like you basically do the stuff you would do in elementary school, in high school. Um, so you have that kind of knowledge. When you get out of that comfort zone or safe zone, which is called ELL, because you can ask any dumb questions you want and they won't get angry at you because they're trained for that. When you get out of that and actually go to normal classes like other kids would do, that becomes hard because um, the teacher who's teaching that class may or may not have been had that ELL training because uh, I know there's some classes teachers have to take nowadays to accommodate that, to 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 like to pass even get through the get the teacher license, um, and the high school I went to, there were some teachers who actually had not taken those classes because with the time they graduated or they became teacher, they didn't have to take those classes, um, so they didn't have that kind of skill to communicate with me how to do it, but since my, I'm very happy with my high school experience. My teachers actually had been through that process. Even though they're the old teachers, they were actually communicated with my ELL teacher. And then that ELL teacher would get the assignments and stuff like that from those other classes teachers and then would actually translate to me. And then I actually would do my homework in ELL classes. Another thing I want to add to this is that if you are not, if, if you're a person who's not going to put 100% into this, or if you're a person who's learning English and they're, they're like, okay, I'm just going to go to school, do my stuff, come back and that's it. You're not gonna learn English. If you're, if you're a person from another country or from another place and you're learning their language, you have to put your 100% in it because um, you have to say after school, you have to ask million questions and you have to be willing to do everything to get 100, like do your work because I remember me the first semester um, the only challenging class I would say was a math class because the professor or the teacher would speak in English and um, I sometimes I did not get it or majority of the time I did not get what he was trying to say. But the good thing in my case was that I had actually taken that class before in India in my language. So some of the stuff I knew beforehand. So it wasn't that hard but the, the new stuff which was at the end of the semester, I actually had to take all the assignments 
get to my ELL teacher, she would translate it and then give it to me. That's how it worked. And that, that translation and all that period, you have to figure it out somehow because uh, teachers have a lot of things to do. They're just not going to care about you unless you make them care about you because you show devotion that I do actually care about this and I want to learn this. Please help me out there. Then they will do stuff for you. And, and put time together. Like Be like, okay, I need to get this assignment done. This time, here's the assignment. Any time, give me any time, I will be there. I'll do it with you. That's how you get your job done or that's how you get your work done. Um, so the biggest thing, if you are learning a language or actually anything in, in anything, you have to put your 100% in it. You have to be willing to do it. That's the only thing which is going to get it done. OK, um, this is a big thing. Um, so if you are with people around who actually don't speak English like you do, that's actually really comforting because you don't feel like you are the only person who doesn't know what you're doing because when you look at them, they don't even know what they're doing. Um, they actually look at you because you're not doing anything. So it's kind of like, it, it, kind of, it kind of puts you in a safe zone. Again, ELL is a very safe zone because again, you can ask million questions and they won't say anything. Um, but the guy who's sitting right next to you might be from France, might be from some other country. They don't know what, what, what language do you speak. Um, and, and, and just seeing them, they, you are in the same situation they are at, you feel more happy. Or not happy in a way, but you feel more comforting because then you're not like, I'm the only one who's being kept behind because you're going to the same situation. So it, it's kind of actually helpful to have another people from another origin to have that. And on top of that, uh, if you look in an interesting way, when you actually start to speak a little bit English, um, it's fun to sit with those people because they have different life experience than you do. Um, they've been through different things that you have not even seen or not even thought of that. So it's kind of like, it's, it's a really good place to be at because then you actually, rather than just sitting at one place and learning English, you actually get what's happening in the world or what's happening in the country they're from. It's fun. It's fun to be in that kind of situation. Again, um, if you want to make friends, um, that depends on you how good of a person you are or how willing you are to talk with other people. Um, but if you're learning in a language, that's going to be hard. Uh, I'm just going to put it out, it's going to be hard because when you go home, you're going to talk to your parents. You're speaking native language. You don't have anyone 24-7 who speaks this, the different language or the speaks the third language which you're trying to learn. Uh, in my case, that was the same situation. My dad did not speak English very well. Um, the only people when I get home and was able to speak was my cousins because they were born here and then I was able to communicate with them. Actually that was the most good part about it because if I say something wrong they would actually correct me and then say back in my language so I know what I would said wrong, what I should have done or should have done. So there's that. Friends part. Um, I actually played baseball in sophomore year. I did track in freshman year. Um, Freshman year, again, I did not, I barely speak English. Um, that was actually good because when, when you go outside, you talk to the kids, they become a whole different person. In school, what are you going to talk about? Oh, yeah, I got a 10 on my quiz. Hey, I did that. Hey, how do you solve this problem? That's your knowledge. Um, that's your school knowledge, or I'll put it this way, that's your school English. If you want to survive in America, or if you, again, if you want to learn a, another language, um, you need to also know the outside language, like hip language, that you, you need to get in there because to fit in friends, again, it, it's kind of like to fit in a society, sometimes you have to actually become the society. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's how I see it. Um, to, to fit in all of these new kids, I actually had to adopt their stuff. Um, I, I, I never liked baseball. I'm just going to come out and say I never liked baseball. The only reason I played baseball because it was the closest resemblance to the cricket. There were, there's so many funny stories I can get into baseball right now, but I won't. Uh, because it's closer represents to that. The only reason I went to track is because my parents forced me to go there. The only reason they did that is because not from a physical fitness, because my dad is actually a professional athlete. He could just do it with me anytime he wants. The only reason he did this is because he wanted me to actually get the exposure from outside, how the world is acting outside, what's happening, what's not happening. Um, so again, you need to get that exposure. Again, one thing more, you're not going to get that exposure in one day. That's going to actually take time. Um, um, to, to adopt to that American society thing, which I just mentioned before, um, 
it's actually going to take you two or three more years. Um, I hated rap songs the first day I saw, um, uh, listened to them. Um, right now, J. Cole is my first rapper. I love that dude. Um, so when you actually like start to talking or actually they like, get in involved in the community and the new things they're doing or the hip things they're they're doing, you actually start to enjoy them too. So I guess I'm telling you to change yourself a little bit, um, but you have to. You have to be willing to change a little bit to fit in that society, because society is not going to adapt you. You have to adapt to the society. I know that sounds awful that you have to become someone else to fit in that society. But that's the thing. You have to get through that. And then, actually, in my opinion, when you actually do get through that, it's, it's fun. Um, like, I can give you another example. Um, I was never into politics. I never cared who wins the president. I never cared who was the what and what so. Never cared in India who was the president. Never. Um, last year, <laughs> I actually started paying attention because that was a thing people talked about or, or, or one of my friends talked about. Um, and it got interesting. It got me intriguing that um, how many things are related to this. My studies, my social security, my health insurance, everything was involved in politics. So I got really into it. Um, so you have to actually start developing new interests and, and start to do stuff like other people would do or other kids around you do. So that's how you adapt to the community. And then that's how you make friends, in my opinion. I, I'm going to put it out there. Actually, I do believe in my religion. I don't force it on anyone. If you, if you believe in a religion, that's good. But I do. Uh, my religion is Sikhism, which is, um, so there's some requirements in that. Um, you have to wear the turban, which I'm wearing. This is actually the short version. I have to be, wear a little bit bigger. Um, um, and then you have to actually have a clothes on. Um, that doesn't mean you have to like have everything on. You just need to have uh, clothes which will cover your private area. Uh, so like like an underwear. You need to have underwear all the time. Um, you need to actually have to wear this bracelet uh, all the time because uh, in my religion we see as a, or, um, as, as a, because you put it in a hand which is your dominant hand. So the reason you do that is because when you do something, you're actually going to do something with your hands or, or you're going to proceed to do with something in your hands. So the purpose behind is that um, when you do that, it's a permanent reminder, don't do something bad because that will, that will harm people, that will hurt people, or don't do anything bad. That's, that's, that's what it resembles. And you have to have your hair, which I do, um, and you have to wear a comb in your hair, which I do. So these are, these are some requirements I have to go through. Um, it, it, let's put it this way. Um, if you feel like your religion is conflicting with something which is keeping you from meeting new people or get friends with new people, I don't think that's a big deal. Because if you make it a big deal, then it's going to be a big deal. Because another thing, uh, I'm a vegetarian, so don't, I don't eat meat and stuff like that. I have friends who eat meat. I have a family member who eats meat. Um, I, I don't prefer alcohol. I have friends who eat, uh, drink alcohol. I have, a, I have a brother who actually drinks alcohol. So I think if you, I don't think religion should be your first point of view because if you think that way, that religion is the only thing, I don't think you'll be able to communicate. I don't think you'll be able to make new friends. I don't think you'll be able to seek new op opportunities. Um, I don't think you should make our religion your first biggest priority because I feel like if you're just doing what you're supposed to do, which in my opinion is if you're doing everything which will go with humanity, I think that's the religion. Isn't every religion says that help people do good in life? So I don't see religion as a big deal. Yeah, I do definitely recognize that I do get racially targeted. I do, people look at me when I walk on the street that who's that, they give a second thought you know, because my turban puts in their mind that I'm a terrorist, which I totally get it. But I don't think religion should be the big deal. If you want to make friends, if you want to be open to new opportunities, you have to accept this, that a religion is not everything. There's a, a lot of people who out there who don't even believe in God. There are a lot of people who out there who, who have different religion than do, they have different stuff they do, respect that. Don't, don't hate on it. Respect that. Uh, like you, if you are a religion person, you do it too. I do it too. So I respect that. Um, so th that's the thing. Um, and I don't think that actually goes with 
more like learning English part of the way, I feel like that goes with how to fit in a society coming from another country. Because in an, in, when you're living in, living in a new country, everyone does, basically majority of the people do what you're doing. Um, and the biggest thing about I want to say in America is that um, you can find literally every religion in America or every person who has actually, like I feel like you can find mix of people who have had heritage from every single culture, every single religion, or every single world. And that's the biggest thing about America, and I think that's what makes America. Um, and if you're coming to America, um, you're gonna see a lot of people who are different than you, and, and, and some of them are actually are gonna become friends with you. I can name a lot of people who are friends with me. They're Christians, Jewish, um, everything, Hindu, Pakistan, like everything. Um, I have friends from Greece, so there you go. So you have to be accepting to that. Uh, and, and some of them actually are going to help you. There's a lot of people who I know who actually helped me through this transformation from me learning English. Um, and they're actually going to meet a lot of people who just hate you because they just hate you. Um, and then they're going to teach you bad stuff. Uh, keep away from them. Just stay away from them. You don't need to do that. Um, and I've, I've had many experience in high school. People have taught me bad stuff. And when I would go out and say that stuff, I would get Dude, well, what are you saying? What are you saying? That's wrong. I was like, okay, this dude told me that. It's like, well, he's a bad person. Don't talk to him. See, so you have to be accepting to that. Um, as you, there's two answers I can give here. One is a school perspective, and one is outside perspective, which is after school. Um, school perspective. Um, freshman year, barely knew English. Wasn't able to talk to a lot of people. Sophomore year, knew a little bit of English. Actually, did MCAT. MCAT, not MCAT, not MCAT. Um, MCAS the English learning exam thing. Um, past that, that was a big deal. I was so happy about that. Junior year, that was the year I was so scared because uh, that was the year which was gonna decide if I go to college or not. SATs, big milestone. I wanna help everyone who helped me through this, um, specifically John, who's one of our professors here. Um, SATs, for that I needed to know a lot of English because two of the sections are English, English. One of them is grammar, one of them is writing and stuff like that. I had to actually write an um, essay over that. So if I had not gone through those things, I would not be in EMAS right now. Those were the milestones I had to get through. They were challenging, they were hard to get through, but once actually I committed myself that I'm actually going to do it, just do it. Like, Nike, just do it. <laughs> but um, so those were the things I had to get through in school. Um, outside perspective, the time you start to, to like feel a little bit confident, oh, actually, I know stuff now, or I can communicate now, is the time when you go outside, you make friends. Well, you should have friends. Um, and then you talk to them. And then, then they say, oh, dude, you improved so well. I knew you from freshman year. You, like, we can literally have a conversation now. Like, the first day you came here, uh, I just stared at you. And then I didn't talk to you. So that's the time when you actually start talking to them. And then they like, start to talking to them. Um, and, and you have a conversation about stuff. That's, that's, that, that feels awesome. Um, second time is, is that I didn't have anything to talk about because I was from a different, I was looking things at different perspective, but when you actually change your perspective, you have a lot of things to talk about. Um, so I used to talk with my friends and we, sh we actually became really good friends. Um, and there's some friends I know from high school who actually went to the same college with me and I know them very well and they know me very well and uh, they don't see me as a guy from India who came here who learned English. I don't think they see me like that anymore. Um, they see me a person who actually did they, what they did, got into the same university as they did. Um, it's just that I had to work a little bit harder than them, but that was given because if you, are, if you are coming to another country or if you are learning a new language, you have to, have to put in that time because um, the other dude is gonna do a little bit less work than you, but you have to do push more or do more work to get to the point what they are at. Um, so when we got into the same university, um, they don't see me as a yellow person anymore. They don't see me as a person who just learned English. They see me as their friend, um, as their colleague who, who's taking the same classes or doing as well they are doing. So it changes over time. And honest with you, after a while, when you actually do get out of yellow, when you actually start to get up and then approach your 
your, your goals, um, you actually forgot about that past because I don't, I'm not gonna lie, I barely remember a certain day sitting in a class learning English. I don't remember that anymore um, because that's like gone. Like I have done that already. I, I still do have problems. It's hard for me to write papers and stuff like that. But once I do, there's a lot of friends outside. Those friends who, you, who didn't talk to me in freshman year, now I actually prayer through my essays and stuff like that. One of my friends is a really good friend with me. He actually checks my essays and stuff like that. And he has seen my progress, what I've done, what I used to do, not what I do now. So when they tell you back, dude, this is awesome, you feel just happy. Like, accomplish something, you just feel happy. So that's there for that. Um, biggest thing, if you are learning a new language and the biggest hurdle you need to get over is, is yourself. Because um, if you're a person who's not outgoing, not asking questions, who just lays back and does his own stuff, I don't think you are gonna learn language. I don't think you will be able to get to the point where you're like, okay, now I know this. I don't need to worry about this anymore because this is one of the things I have right now. You need to be willing to go out. You need to go out. You need to ask people. You need to ask as many as questions you ask. There was a time when, in high school, for me, when I used to talk to people and they would say something and I would not know what they're saying and I would just say straight back, what does that mean? Then they would tell it to me. So the next time I have that same conversation with them, I know what they're saying. So that's how you build up. You need to build up. You're gonna start here, but at the end, you're gonna be here. So you need to start building up by talking to people, by doing your assignments by not sitting at a chair and just thinking in your mind, oh, I can't talk to these people because I don't know how to speak. No, dude, you gotta go out. You gotta talk to people. That's the biggest thing you can do and that's the biggest hurdle. And the people who are helping you to get there, don't be an asshole. Don't teach them bad words. Don't teach them like bad stuff. Uh, I know from my past, the, from my freshman year, people would say something, a bad word to me and they were like, no, 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 dude, this means that. No, 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 this means that. So I would actually replace that word I used to use anymore and put that word there, and that would get me into problems. I've said swears to my professors, just imagine that. And they didn't say anything back to me because they knew someone probably messed up with me. That kind of person, please stay away from that. <laughs> Talk to the people who know what they're saying and know them a little bit. Don't know them a little bit so that you know they won't teach you something bad. Um, and stay away from those bad people. And one advice to those people who are teaching them, you don't do that, please, because that messes up with everyone. Um, for me, American dream, um, again, I'm gonna say this again. Uh, I'm a religious person. I do believe in my religion. Um, for me, the American dream is, first thing first, I need to get through college. Second thing second, I don't want to work like my dad does. I don't, in that case, I don't mean he doesn't work in a good job. I mean, my family has been working under someone for a while now. Um, my grandfather, his father, was working some, under someone. Um, my family has never been educated at that level. I think my sister is the first person, well, she's in India. Um, my sister is the first person from her whole family who actually is a dentist right now. So. Uh, for American dream for me is that have good education, have a good house, like all Americans do, have a good house, have a little bit of money so that I don't feel like I don't have that financial support that I can live my life well. Um, I've always lived in a good um, life because my dad provided me that. He has done a lot for me, um, I respect that dude. Um, so for me, my American dream is that have a home, have a nice car because that's my dream, uh, have a little bit of money on me, um, and work in a respectable job, and have my family stay healthy and wealthy, and I don't have to think something else. I don't, so I'm gonna just put this in a simple way. My American dream is same as an, another American dream, like another American would have. That's my same American dream. Um, so I don't know how you see, like the, the thing you want is the things I want. We could argue on some things, but majority of the times, the things you want, that's the thing I want. So that's my American dream.